There's no cure for FMD. Everybody who has FMD is put on an aspirin 81 milligrams a day, and that's to prevent uh, blood products like platelets from attaching to the little webs inside the artery. Every patient with FMD should have imaging, we prefer CT angiography, from the head to the pelvis. And the purpose of that is to identify aneurysms or dissections. So about 18% of patients have an aneurysm intracranially. About 22 or 23% of patients have an aneurysm somewhere in their body. And then 26% or so patients have evidence of a dissection in some artery in their body. So if the patient has an aneurysm, then either the aneurysm is treated if it's of a size where it potentially could rupture, and that treatment could involve putting coils in the aneurysm, doing an operation to remove the aneurysm. If the patient has a dissection or a tear in the artery, then depending on what artery is involved, they may be put on more potent blood thinning medications, either aspirin and clopidogrel or aspirin and an anticoagulant. If the patient presents with hypertension that's difficult to control or of recent onset and the renal arteries are involved, then the patient often has a percutaneous balloon angioplasty of the renal arteries. And if it's recent onset hypertension, it can cure the high blood pressure. In other words, they may not need to take medications again. The patient often presents to the emergency room with chest pain. And they do an EKG and check cardiac enzymes and they're abnormal, showing that the patient is having a heart attack. Since the average age of diagnosis of FMD is about age 52, the emergency room doctor is faced with a 52-year-old woman, because it usually affects w women, who don't have the usual cardiovascular risk factors, non-smokers, cholesterol normal, ideal body weight, so there's no reason for them to have a heart attack. They then get taken to the cardiac catheterization lab, and the interventional cardiologist does an angiogram on them and either recognizes that it's a dissection. A dissection is when the walls of the artery split. Or just tells the patient they have a blockage. The patients who don't take that as an answer, why should I have a blockage? I'm a young, healthy woman. I've never smoked. They go to, they go online, they look this up, and they see there's a condition called SCAD. They get a CD made of their um, heart catheterization, and then they send it to whoever they identify as an expert in SCAD. For example, I have patients sending me CDs all the time saying, my cardiologist told me I have a blockage, I just can't buy that. There must be some other reason. So the large majority are women. There are some differences. Women more often have involvement of the carotid and vertebral arteries, more often present with a carotid dissection or stroke. Men more often have involvement of the renal arteries or other arteries in the abdomen and present with either a dissection or a tear in the renal artery or the artery to the intestines or present with infarction of a kidney, that means a portion of the kidney has died. So there are some subtle differences. Any of these things can occur in men or women. It's just women most often have carotid disease, men most often have disease in the abdomen.